My Outdoor TV is your home for every Major League Fishing 2024 event. Yes, sir. Including the General Tire Team Series. I put the team on my back, baby. Watch free on My Outdoor TV with promo code MLF30. This is Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. It's the Toro Stage One. Sam Rayburn presented by Power Pole. We welcome you into our Major League Fishing studios alongside Marty Stone and JT Kenny. I'm Chad McKee. This week, 80 of the top anglers in professional bass fishing have converged on Sam Rayburn Reservoir in East Texas to kick off the 2021 Bass Pro Tour season. We've been through five days of grueling competition and now only one remains, our championship round. Let's take a look at this season's full tournament breakdown. Each Bass Pro Tour stage consists of six days of competition made up of three rounds qualifying, knockout, and championship. The first four days are the qualifying rounds. All 80 anglers are seeded into two groups of 40, each stacking up as much weight as possible on the score tracker. At the end of their rounds, each angler with the most weight advances directly to the championship round, while the remaining top half of each group survive to fight another day. Day five is the knockout round. 38 anglers hit the water, all with their weights back at zero. The eight anglers with the most weight at the end of the day will earn their ticket to the final round. Day six, championship round. The stage's top 10 anglers face off to fight for the points, the money, and the glory of being a Bass Pro Tour stage champion. From 80 to 40, and now we're down to only 10. But before we get you out to the waters of Sam Rayburn Reservoir to watch these pros battle it out for a championship trophy, as well as the $100,000 first prize, let's revisit the knockout round that got these pros into this position today. After four punishing days of competition, we once again unleash 38 Bass Pro Tour anglers on Sam Rayburn Reservoir for the Stage 1 Knockout Round. Their goal, finish in the top eight to join automatic qualifiers Ot Defoe and Gerald Sporer in today's championship. As they've done all week, the Big Bass of Texas showed up in period one. Justin Lucas with a 5-12 would lead the field, followed closely by Jeff Sprague, who hauled in a 5-8. Yeah, the most important thing, though, is he's got a clue what's going on on this lake. Flipping a striking Ocho and mixing in a few sight fishing. He's starting to see some of these Texas bass sit down on the beds. Justin Lucas's strong day continued in periods two and three. With the help of another five pounder and a Texas toad of six pounds, seven ounces, Lucas was able to tighten his grip on first place and enter into practice mode for today's final round. Yeah, this lake's been fishing weird, different, strange, whatever we want to say. And who would think going into the championship round, the best bag of the tournament would be on a drop shot? In addition to our automatic qualifiers, Ot Defoe and Gerald Sporer, Justin Lucas advanced to the championship round with Cliff Pace, Luke Clawson, Jeff Sprague, Tommy Biffle, Bobby Lane, Mark Davis, and Cliff Crochet, who finished the day on the right side of the Toro cut line. He threw that snag-proof frog pretty much all day, he said, and it barely, but it got him on the correct side of that Toro cut line. Though he would finish as the first angler out in ninth place, pro circuit angler Spencer Shuffield did win the knockout round's $1,000 Berkeley Big Bass bonus when he hauled in this 6-9 early on in period three. We went from 80 to 40, and now there's only 10. Who will win the championship round here on Sam Rayburn Reservoir and claim the $100,000 prize? Let's get you out to the water and count you down to lines in for the championship round. Three, two, one, lines in. Begin the third one. Championship round, baby. Very first cast right there. Here we go. There's only one thing left to do, and that's get that trophy. No mercy. Gonna be aggressive all day. Let's go, baby. Two fish an hour, that'd be nice. Two fish an hour, that'd be really nice. It's gonna be a jackhammer and a uh, wacky worm for me today. I mean, that's gonna be the two things. I really don't know any other way to get a bite right now. He's not scorable, but that's three days in a row I've caught one on my first cast. 
Saturday I'm fishing is just the back of a pocket. You got grass and wood, something a little different. And fish is coming here to spawn. That grass sets up real good, lets them roam. This is a big spawning area in here. It's the right kind of water. Your weight's in the grass a lot, and them fish would just be on there. Let's we'll see if I can get one to choke this buzz bait right off the bat, and hopefully we can get off to a fast start because somewhere in all that mess is going to be a giant. If you don't make the right flip, you won't get the bite. So it's not like you can rush through there and get a bite and then be like, okay, I can slow down. No, you, you got to just kind of go slow and, and piece it together. If I could just get something in my hands that I knew they would bite under these conditions, that would help a lot. Isn't that weird? There's a bunch of fish around that tree yesterday and not one today. Well, it's going to be a different day today, isn't it? A little bit of schooling activity going on this morning. Hope they're schooling in these bushes. One pound, 15 ounces, non-scorable. Yeah. Oh well. Boy, it's running at me. Down that piece of wood. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. This one'll score. Stay on there, buddy. Yep. There's our first scoreable bass of the day. <laughs> two pounds, 15 ounces. I'm also a three pounder, 215. It's our first one. Tommy Ott Defoe's first angler on the score tracker. His fish weighed two pounds, 15 ounces. I was hoping his fish had moved, but they may not have. Oh, well, it's gonna be hard to beat. Don't think that would play. We'll check him out. He might. He might make two pounds. He's got it choked too, man. Yes, thank you, Jesus, on the DT4, baby. I'm gonna be two pounds. Two pounds, two ounces. That'll work. That's the way to start the morning right there. Two pounds, 10 ounces. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, the chunk there. Starting early. This is the area where I've caught all my big fish. I want to start here, see if I can get one of them big ones to bite early. Man, I haven't had a little one hit it yet. At this point yesterday, I would have had some little ones hitting it. It's gonna be later in the day before this goes down. They just not want to do nothing. Because it got down to 50s last night and dropped that water temperature a few degrees. I never felt any grass till I got here. When I finally got to that grass, I slowed way down. About the time that weight gets in that grass, you slow it up right there, and that's where you'll get a bite. For as aggressive as they're feeding today on bait, they're actually not biting as good. I mean, this is the third day I've fished for them, so they've seen a lot of my tricks already, but they've not fed on the surface this much yet. It's been pretty consistent today. Originally known as McGee Bend Dam and Reservoir, this fishery was renamed in honor of Speaker of the House Sam Rayburn in 1963. The goat, Kevin Van Dam, first came here in 1992. He said it was love at first sight. Who better to take us through today's lake breakdown? So this week, we're at the Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour, stage one in Sam Rayburn, Texas. So it's mid-March. This is prime time to be in Texas. You know, the fish should be moving up to spawn. You know, the week before we got here, we had a pretty big cold front. It kind of lasted through practice where it dropped the water temperatures back down into the mid-50s and kind of is holding these fish back. Sam Rayburn has a lot of options, though. First and foremost, it has a lot of hydrilla. You know, that grass is just great habitat. With all the flats, the ditches, and the drains, and now with the lake being almost a full pool where there's a lot of flooded grass and bushes in the water, this week is gonna be all about adapting to the changing conditions. You know, starting out, I think a lot of the offshore anglers that are fishing the grass and the ditches, the timber, the structure in the lake are really gonna show out. But as it warms up and these fish move up shallower, you're gonna see the shallow water specialist really shine. And so the guy who adapts and makes that transition from the deep water areas as these fish move up, as the weather warms up, that's gonna be the guy that walks out of here with the big trophy.
Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour is brought to you by Berkeley, your fish, our science. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Power Pole, total boat control. BNW Trailer Hitches, towing adventure. And by Sonic, this is how we Sonic. Welcome back to Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. The Toro Stage 1 Sam Rayburn is presented by Power Pole. It's the first championship round of the 2021 Bass Pro Tour season. Our final 10 pros just went lines in here on Sam Rayburn Reservoir. While they continued their search for Texas toads, let's go over the scoring rules. The anglers began the round with zero weight. A scorable bass must weigh at least two pounds. The pro with the most weight at the end of the day will be crowned stage one champion. What have I got, four? You've got three fish for a total of seven pounds, 10 ounces. That one was on a half ounce. Double willow spinnerbait, the Terminator Pro Series spinnerbait. I'm not even getting little ones hitting it. The other day, like I would have had four or five little ones anyway by now hitting it, beating on it. It feels a little different this morning. Maybe it's because the wind ain't blowing or that little cool snap come through. There's just not much going on. I, I hate to say it, but when the wind blows out of the east, usually the fish bite the least. I think the fish are still in here. It's just a lot of pressure, so it's just gonna take some time. I am really surprised that I haven't had a single good bite down this whole stretch. This is where I caught the majority of what I caught yesterday. I know there's more of them in here. One of these trees is just, I don't know what makes them consistently good, but there's a handful of them in here that have just consistently produced for me. I don't like these bushes that are just way off out here in four foot of water. That's not what I'm catching them out of. No matter how many times I go by them, it's hard for me to flip them because I, I just know they're not in them. I had one bite it, but he's just pecking it. I hadn't had a good bite yet. There's been fish feed on up this brush and stuff each day too, but I've, I've not done any good at catching them. Let's keep changing it up. A little swim jig. The slower you go, the more bites you'll get, which is tournament fishing. Guys want to go fast, and I've got to, you know, tell myself, hey, you got to slow down. You've got to keep it slow. There he is. <sighs> yeah. There's a swim jig in the water. <laughs> I boat flipped him and he came off in the air. Three pounds, 12 ounces. Start out with a 312. Boom, baby. Hot Defoe just caught two more fish. He's up to nine pounds, 10 ounces. Tell a lot, he needs to slow down just a little bit now. They hit him a couple fish first thing this morning and turned around and answered with a 312. That's how it's gonna be all day. We have to just stay with them, stay answering them every time. They, they do it, we gotta do it. I'm getting out a white popping frog. A couple different things to try up in this stuff. Honestly, I think the, the shad are really starting to spawn pretty heavy. I think he should go. Two yes. pounds, two ounces. Good, good. Finally got me a scoreable. Cliff Crochet just caught a two pound, two ounce fish. He is now on score tracker. Pick up the pace. Caught him swimming that jig. That one wasn't a score that broke my heart. One will definitely keep. A nice one to start the day there. I'm gonna absolutely smoke the jackhammer too. I like it. Four pounds, 10 ounces. Thank you, sir. 410. It's the kind of fish we like to start championship day with right there. Luke Clawson's the fifth angler on the score tracker. His first fish weighed four pounds, 10 ounces. That's a good one. Crazy. I fished that tree three times yesterday and never had a bite on it. He was there today. Stay 
That's a good one. Oh my gosh. I'm not gonna lose one like yesterday. Oh my God. That should be scorable. Two pounds, three ounces. Two, three. Perfect. Two pounds, 15 ounces. Oh, the old hat slam. Dude, that was a monster too. First frog bite of the dean. You always wish it would be better, but so far so good, getting some bites. I like where we're at. Seems like a perfect day to catch a bunch on a frog. Bass Pro Wacky Sticko, black and blue, been by far the best thing to get them to bite once they slow down. Caught some in here on a worm, but that Wacky is definitely better. This one might score. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think we've got us a scoreable. Two pounds, four ounces. Two, four. Another scoreable. Another one we can add to the tally again. Well, that's not surprising that he's still got it going. He's had it going better than anybody the whole tournament. You know, Locke's been catching them quicker, easier, better than the rest of us. Yeah, he's starting to run away with it. You can't let him get too far ahead. Bad part is, that's the last bag of that color I've got. I'll have to bite something else. I don't think it'll matter too much. I think they'll bite about whatever they can see. Come here. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. Gotcha. Finally. There we go. Three pounds, 12 ounces. All right. Four pounds, three ounces. Boomba! Oh, old mama bass right there. That's the kind we're looking for. Thank you, Lord. Mark Davis has caught his second bass that weighed four pounds, three ounces. He moves into second with six pounds, five ounces. Also, Justin Lucas has caught his first bass. It weighed three pounds, 12 ounces. How about a bite? Good Lord. Wouldn't hurt to get a chance at one. God dang it! That's the other thing about a Carolina rig. You don't want to constantly move it. You want to work it, let it sit. And when I say move it, you know, you move it six, eight, ten inches, it's all. Sorry guys, I don't have much to say. I'm honestly just, I'm sick to my stomach right now that I lost those first two. But they're still here. We're gonna grind. This is Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. The Toro Stage 1 Sam Rayburn is presented by Power Pole. On the same stretch of water that Ot Defoe began both days of his qualifying round, he's once again doing massive damage to Score Tracker, as you can see here in today's favorite fishing overview of the day. With an hour remaining in period one, Ot Defoe is putting on a clinic. The General Tire Pro has scored three times as many fish as any other angler and has more than twice the weight of second place Mark Davis. The day is still early, however, and these pros the most dominant all week. They'll certainly make a push for Score Tracker's top spot. We started this morning, I caught one off this point over here. So I moved out here where it's a little cleaner. And what you've got out here, you've got clean inside and then short high drill out in front of it but it's a good, hard, clean bottom where you can drag on it. Been a good start. It's actually not been, even as many fish as I've caught, it's not been quite as fast and furious. Um, 
as I had been in here the last few mornings, but I have caught six scorables, kind of milking this one spot over right now for all I can. I probably won't stay here the whole first period. I'll probably cut out of here before then, but I'll most definitely be coming back some point in time today. We're gonna ease in here where I caught some yesterday and there were a bunch of them on a flat spot where on beds and then fish that, get done with that, and then let's just get out of here and just go run some new water. Let's go have a good day of doing something different. I'm about to start covering some water. You know, I probably need 15 bites, that's what it ain't. I think if I hit the right area, fishing like this, it could go down real quick. It's been a lot slower. I've only caught a few little ones, and one nice one, I caught a 410, but I still think a lot of these fish are coming to spawn here. I mean, it's, it's gonna happen. This place has been one of them grinds all week long, and it seems that they kind of bite in flurries, and today that hadn't happened yet. The only bites I've had have been still on a jerk bait. I just, they've all been, you know, small. Trying to hit some of these more key specific places, high percentage places with a different technique and just see if I can get a bite, but I haven't been able to make it work. Well, it's not going real well. Getting a few bites, but uh, not enough two pound bites. We've got to get a big bite or we've got to get a lot of bites, one or the other. A lot of, a lot of two pound bites. I got to do something else. I can't spend a whole lot of time on this stuff because I know this stuff there's only one fish here, one fish there. Stuff might be good for second, but I don't think it's good enough for first. Pretty good one right there. Look at that. Slight touch. Four pounds, one ounce. Boom. Them's the kind we're wanting right there, folks. We're gonna run around the corner and fish something different. I fished here yesterday and I didn't catch a lot of them, but there was a bite on every tree from something. Now you don't even catch one. We're running some stuff that I haven't fished since the first day of practice, but had fish on it. If I don't think I can win up here, I'll definitely be adjusting. Now this water's not what I would call clear, but it's got color. So I'm fishing about roughly a three foot liter. You know, if this water was gin clear, I'd go to a seven or even an eight foot liter. And the longer your liter is, that's when this seven foot 11 rod comes into play to get the slack out of your line. <clears throat> that fish was just on nothing. Mm. Oh, it's not that big. I swore when it jumped it was a lot bigger than that, but I'll take it. I just slung a cast out. That's why it's important to always keep a bait in the water. <laughs> like I just rubbed nothing and all of a sudden a bass attacked it. Three pounds, five ounces. And it was a three five. Four pounds, eight ounces. There we go, baby, four and a half pounder. That's the quickest way right there to catch eye. It would do. Feels like a relatively bad deal just sitting out here throwing at a mud flat, but there was one. So maybe I need to fish more of that. Might be the only thing not getting pressured in this lake right now. Gerald, with that fish, you're now in third place. Seven pounds, 10 ounces behind eye. Slow down, I so I can fish right. Two pounds, one ounce. Good deal. That'll work. <clears throat> About 40 of them, we'd be in good shape. Now doing the scariest thing to me in tournament fishing, and that's fishing new water. To give myself a chance to win, I think I gotta fish fresh water, and that is scary. It's new water, but it's the same pattern. It's real shallow, throwing that frog. Let's, let's play this one first. We'll finish that thought in a minute. Two pounds, one ounce. Two, one. Let's see if Ott slows down, because you don't know if he just got one good stretch or what. So you can't just pull the plug too early. I think that's like five or six I've caught out of this little opening in the bushes. 
There must be like a little ditch or something. Just a little bitty groove right there, I feel like. Two pounds, three ounces. That works. Oh, it's a big one. Oh no! It's like a six pounder. I caught a good one yesterday off this island, but I caught him flipping over there. Scoreable fish, scoreable fish. What just happened there? That was not pretty. Tommy, <laughs> that'll be a fish landing violation. Two minute penalty. Two pounds, nine ounces. Two nine. There we go. Another scoreable fish. Coming right out of there on the wacky worms. Two pounds, zero ounces. Score tracker update, Hot Depot's up to nine bass total. 20 pounds, eight ounces. We don't need a runaway, you know. We need for it to be exciting. I'm sure Hot doesn't feel that way, though. It's the pace that he's catching them. If he keeps catching them at that speed, I gotta do something else. I hadn't been able to catch them that fast. Tommy, those last three fish brings your total to nine pounds, three ounces. You move into third place. I wish they'd do that on every one of these little islands. We'd be in business. Welcome back to Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. The Toro Stage 1 Sam Rayburn is presented by PowerPole. Under 30 minutes remain in the first period of the Stage 1 Championship round, and Ot Defo is in full control. With nine bass on the score tracker, his advantage is now 10 pounds over the field. They'll need to make period two adjustments if they are to prevent Defo from becoming a two-time Bass Pro Tour champion. I don't know how much longer I want to stay here if I want to try to get to my other spot before this period ends, or if I just want to finish it out here. There's two things I really want to do. I want to run further up the river and fish where I saw some shad. And then I want to try some main lake cypress trees further down the lake. So I got to make a decision if I want to go north or I want to go south. I'm just betting on odds. If I can cover enough water, I'll put it in front of enough fish to bait. I just knew going into the day to have any chance to win, I had to go find some new water. And uh, it's looking like we're finding some. Trying a little bit of new stuff, but also still keeping the old stuff. Just kind of staying in the deer stand area, so to speak. When they pull that water at night, they don't like it at all. And it shows. God don't mind <laughs> Really bad conditions, slick, sunny. I was fortunate enough to have a lot of wind yesterday and use that to my advantage. And I found several of these places out here. It seemed like I had groups of fish on it and I know they're still here. I don't know if they're just biting funny because of pressure, or I don't know what's going on. I feel good though. I know what I want to do. Keep this drop shot in my hands and try and chase Ott down. That's a better fish. Stay on there. We got to check him. I hope he's going to go. We ain't giving up yet. Oh, it might have 20 pounds, but we're not giving up yet. Gotcha. Two pounds, zero ounces. Well, I've had a lot of them go my way today. A lot of them the last few, I had so many the last few days that were 114s, 115s. Two pounds, 12 ounces. All right, I'll take that. Number two. Ot caught his 10th fish. He's now at 22 pounds, eight ounces. Probably getting just as many bites as I, but he has a better. He's he's around more two pounders. Well, I tied on this little DT4. I had been throwing a different little square bill, one that I actually homemade, 
Uh, oh, I, just, I had a feeling that little DT4 would be a good bait for in here. At least we got another one. Move up that score tracker. pounds 11 ounces Sweet. right there 311 for tracker update Justin Lucas has caught his third fish he's in third place 10 pounds three ounces we'll go hit some stuff that's a little more inconspicuous keep our head in the game just try not to get too far behind Lucas has come on I think he'd only had one and now he's got three I'm finally putting them in the boat that's the only difference I've had six scoreable bass bites so far I mean that's actually good like that might be the best start I've had, honestly. Keep at least, I think. I think. Two pounds, four ounces. Thank you. Yeah. It's kind of overshadowed by lo losing that last one. No fish so far except for that one. That's gonna be a fish land. We'll just violation. leave it there. Four pounds, two ounces. Finally got a fish over four pounds. How about it? Check it out, dog. You know what? Ah, now that's what I call a big old bass. It's a little bit of a mud point, but I don't know why there's so many more bites right there than there's been all this other random bank I've fished. To start, I could catch 10 of them. Another maybe. Two pounds, four ounces. Thank you. We're gonna get that one for the third time here before the end of the period. Give you a score tracker update. Luke Clawson is in second place. He has four fish for 12 pounds, seven ounces. Definitely not the start that I was hoping for today, to say the least. I've been to too many of these now to not have anything go right. Everything always just falls apart on a dang championship day. That's two two fours off the same stump. What are the odds of that? Five, four, three, two, one lines out that's the end of the first period definitely been a good first period so i'm very thankful for that and gonna try to make this next period just as good good news is it feels like we're around some fish i just caught a couple two fours and a three five right through the air i always seem to have just enough fish to run out of fish on on championship day got a little confidence boost going into the second that's for sure you look at it, you think oh everyone else is fishing for second but i'm telling you this thing's not over we just gotta keep fishing you hit the right little pocket and you, you hit you a couple good ones you're right back in the game major league fishing's bass pro tour is brought to you by bass cat feel the rush Power stop brakes. Brake upgrades made easy. Toyota, let's go places. Rapala, hand tuned and tank tested. And by Covercraft, protection for whatever you drive. This is Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. It's the Toro Stage One Sam Rayburn presented by Power Pull. Tommy Biffle hoping he can make up a little ground. Justin Lucas, some early frustration started to right the ship though. Mark Davis seems to have found a productive area trying to get his first Bass Pro Tour win. Luke Clawson, he's in second place. Ott Defoe is on top. The big bass are starting to show up. Can anyone catch enough of them to catch up with Ott Defoe? Coming in, we thought Lucas and Ott Defo because they'd had the biggest weight totals all week. It was going to be a two man race. Slow start for Lucas, but toward the end of that period, he seemed to be able to execute a little better. Well, Chad, we say it was a slow start, but actually 
Justin had two really, really big fish on that light drop shot rig that just got away from him. They could have rocketed him to the top of that score tracker. Had a little bit of a meltdown, but he's now regrouped and he's starting to put some scoreable bass on the score tracker and not just scoreable bass, but good quality fish, not just, you know, barely scoreables. They're good quality fish he's putting on there. If he keeps up this pace, we might find him at the top of the score tracker by the end of the day. Quality fish, Mark Davis is around those and those grass lines, but can he keep up, Marty? Can he keep up in there? Rayburn is famous for those inside grass lines that if you hit the right one, if you hit the right one, it's 15 to 20 scoreable bass as fast as you can throw in there. Mark Davis told me yesterday afternoon he found a couple of those. It just wasn't the quality of fish he was looking for, but what keyed him in was those back-to-back -back two pounders we saw him catch late in the third period and the six pounder. He's found the right area. It's got quantity, it's got quality. If he sits down on one of those inside grass lines, it could get interesting. He will start in third place, 12 pounds, two ounces behind the leader, Ott Defoe. Luke Clawson is 10 pounds back. Let's get out to Mark Davis Five, to start period four, two of our championship three, round at Big two, Sam. One. Lines in, start of the second period. All right. We're fishing the uh, same little area where I caught those two fours earlier. Just make another swing through here to see if I can get another one or two to bite. The biggest player today has been that Bass Pro Wacky Sticko. Kind of one on this, one on that, but the Wacky Worm was something I was able to put in my hand and really stick with. It's just a strip of no grass right through here. And I think they're staging on it, spawning on it, you know, all of the above. I do too. One pound, 12 ounces, and it's horrible bass. We're working our way back up to the little stick where I lost that big one and see if I just don't get lucky. I hate to leave the wind. That's the thing that seems like, regardless of what I'm throwing, even if it's a wacky worm, it's better in the wind. Came over here because I thought the wind was blowing over here. Apparently I was wrong. I don't think the wind's blowing anywhere. The way that wind's picking up, I don't know about running the main lake. That'd be too much of a gamble. You get, if you're trying to fish cypress trees and you get two, three footers hitting cypress trees, that ain't gonna work. There was a lot of fish right in here yesterday. I don't know if they're on the bed or they were just biting because the wind was blowing in, but I wanna find out. I can't get a bite, and then when I do get a bite, I break them off or lose them. So I'm just in a little bit of a search mode right now. I'm gonna, God damn my son. That was a big, a stinking big. One. Fishing, man, just grinding, covering water, skipping that frog as far back as I can, trying to uh, get a reaction bait. I think this plan can work. You just need a little luck. That's a good one. Maybe. That's a slight touch. Don't think so, but maybe. Come on, come on, come on. Gotcha. Yes. One pound, 15 ounces. Oh. Get ready for it. That's the way it goes. Three pounds, eight ounces. Nice. Three, eight. Come on, that's the... Oh, dang. Got many come off. Man, that was a dang good one. Golly bum. Just that moves you to 13 pounds, 11 ounces. Second place, eight pounds, 13 ounces behind Ott Defoe. It's a good way to start the second period. That was a dang good fish. First good fish I've lost up here. Stuff I want to run is kind of on a protected shoreline, so I think I'm going to run down there. I was worried about the wind being too bad and, and direct hitting it, but I think I'm gonna be all right. Let's make a run, guys. Four hours I've been throwing this thing. I've had one decent bite on it. It's hard to put down what's got you this far, but I believe I'm gonna have to. This is definitely not a one spot tape do. I think it's catch one in this pocket, maybe catch two in the other pocket, just cover a bunch of water. I like the conditions, the way they're getting calm, sunny. Could toughen other things up and keep this going. Got another place you gotta go on up here and go give a look. It's one of those deals I hate to leave, but it's, probably good to give them a rest. 
let them forget about me, come back later. It's another maybe. Two pounds, seven ounces. Two seven. Bigger than I thought he was. We'll take him. Second place is Luke Clausen. Second is Luke? Yeah. Oh, really? What's he got? He just passed you, actually. He's at 14 pounds, 14 ounces. We're going to go down this strip one more time, and then we're going to move around a little bit. You need seven pounds, 10 ounces to take the lead. Again, we're in like three feet of water, and it's just mud. I see boils from carp out here. It looks pretty terrible, but apparently some fish out here. It might be a morning deal where this is going to get better as the day goes on. More and more fish moving in here. Two pounds, seven ounces. That'll work. That'll work. Three pounds, 10 ounces. Nice. Good one, guys. Big male, big male. Justin Lucas has caught a three pound, 10 ounce bass, moving him up into second place, moving you down into third place. We probably better go do something different. I just don't know what that is yet. You're five pounds and three ounces behind Doc now. It's one fish in here. Very disappointed in this place. I had two bites here, one on a crankbait, one on a worm. Let's get ready to ride, fellas. This is Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. The Toro Stage 1 Sam Raver is presented by PowerPole. Here in East Texas, we're approaching the halfway point of championship round competition, and many of our pros are on the move. With $350,000 on the line today, these anglers are on the hunt for the productive stretches of Sam Rayburn Reservoir that will lead them to a stage one victory. Ot Defo still sits in first place, but the Tennessee native has yet to scale the scorable bass in this second period, paving the way for Luke Clawson and Tommy Biffle to close the gap. It's Justin Lucas, however, who's benefited the most. In just two casts, the Berkeley Pro added seven pounds to his total and now sits within striking distance of the lead. I'm trying to keep my drop shot out of the grass. That's why I look at my graph so much. We're only in three or four feet of water, super shallow. Can't really see any fish down there, but that's why I step back and look at the graph so much. That was a good move coming over here. We must just come along at the right time. It's amazing how much of a maze this is up in here. I'd be completely lost if it wasn't for this mapping. And it's amazing how accurate it really is and how it shows all those little fingers, all these little chutes and canals and stuff, just miles and miles of it. I ran down the lake with stuff I haven't fished all week. I fished it in practice and it had a lot of fish on it. I already caught like three or four fish already, but every one of them was just shy of that scoreable deal. I caught a six pounder here yesterday. So I thought I'd come over here. Perfect setup. Got the boat out in the grass, casting to the inside edge up on the clean, bare bottom, and working it back into the grass. Need one of them big girls about it. We're fixing to pull up to where it all went down late yesterday. We're gonna hit this stretch, and if I don't get bit, then I'm gonna run around and fish some stuff that I fished the first day just across the lake here. It's just not as easy to catch a two pounder, which is good. You know, it forces guys to do different things. Yeah, you just gotta keep fishing because everything's changing. The sun and the water temp going up. Unless you find that area that's really loaded, you just gotta keep fishing and, and come across and catch one here and there. I'm gonna throw my wacky worm out there just to keep them honest. I mean, there was a bunch of them right there the other day. Mercy me, what the heck happened to all these fish that was in this creek? Well, you can't take a wacky worm Cinco and get one to bite. That's bad.
two pounds, seven ounces. Oh, took us a long time to catch one though, don't it? Golly. Score tracker update for you. Jeff Sprague has two pounds, seven ounces. Well, if there's a bass in this creek right here that weighs two pounds, I have definitely let him outsmart me. Well, at least we don't get zeroed. No skunking today. Fight hard for not being any bigger than they are. Two pounds, four ounces. Two, four, that's gonna be the magic number today. You're three ounces ahead of Clawson. He's at 1702. Just tougher conditions now, but I really thought I could catch him, you know, in conditions like this, so. You need five pounds, six ounces to take the lead. Doesn't sound like much, does it? Very disappointed in that spot. I caught three there as fast as I could throw the other afternoon. That is river fish, though. Current changes just a touch, and they go somewhere else. Otz has kind of quit him, didn't he? Which is a good deal. We just need to find some. Two pounds, five ounces. Two five. Love you. Look at the spots. I don't know what that's about. Cold water or spawning or something. I don't know. But just like this shit going. Skipping way back around the cover. Golly. It's gonna be another short fish. One pound, 14 ounces, non scorable Dang, they're all so close. Still extremely confident, still frogging. It's just a matter of time before we hit the right pocket. No panic at all. They're on this stuff, though. We just need them to be a little bigger. Eat a few shad. Get in here. That won't score. Ah, he's skinny. No. You'll make it. Two pounds, two ounces. All right. Two pounds, three ounces. All right, there's one scoreable on this stuff. You can catch a big one to take up some slack. One of them little ones need to be a six pounder. Carol, with that fish that moves you into fifth place with 10 pounds, seven ounces, 12 pounds, one ounce off the lead. I got this stuff marked all down the lake. I got plenty of it to fish. I just need them to all be scoreables. The lake shuts down, boy, it shuts down. We're gonna go back to where we started. We can't stand it anymore. Welcome back to Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. The Toro Stage One Sam Raber is presented by Powerful. Under an hour remains on our Luminox clock in period two, and first place pro Ot Defoe has completely stalled out. Unable to scale a scorable bass since the late stages of period one, the field continues to cripple Defoe's once massive lead. What earlier appeared to be a blowout is now turning into a Texas shootout. It's important with this Carolina rig to fish it out into the grass a little way. You know, you don't fish it all the way back to the boat. When you get in the grass, you want to make sure you work it on out there, two or three, four pulls on into that grass. A lot of times, that's where you'll get the bite, because your lure's right there on that inside edge. Just got to keep running these trees. Got a lot of confidence in this. I do this stuff all the time when I come here. It's just one of them deals that don't get a lot of pressure, gets overlooked. He might make it. He looks too. He's fatter. Yes. 
two pounds, two ounce, three ounces, two pounds, three ounces. He's got a little bit more belly on him. Man, we're getting a lot of bites down through this stuff, so this might end up being the deal. I just, a lot of them have been just shy of that scoreable mark, but man, we're catching some fish. Two pounds, one ounce. Finally. How far am I behind the leader? Nine pounds, 14 ounces. We're closing in on them a little bit. I finally gave us an opportunity to. Tightening up. I ain't scored one this period, have I? No, sir. Well, I'm right here in a really good little spot. Still dragging that game hog around. I caught a good one here yesterday. I know there's fish here. Just trying to be real cautious and careful and fish it just right. You don't want to get up on top of it. Just gonna run this for a little while and you can hit one stretch of these trees and they'd be on every single tree and every single one of them can be two to four pounds. I'm like 18 pounds back. I'm telling you, it's not outrageous to get back in one of these little pockets and catch 18, bang, bang, bang. Extremely possible. I'm back on my main area. I'm gonna fish it hard one more time and then we're gonna start hitting some new stuff probably. I still feel like there's things out here I'm missing, I'm not hitting. Point we need to make a decision. Got the next period coming up if we're gonna run down and fish some of the stuff I fished the first day. Hopefully that wind's blowing in on a little bit. It's got a little more color. I just don't have a lot of confidence when it's clear and calm and, and there's nobody's catching much. Show them the old wacky rig. That's what I might do is fish through this whole place one time with a wacky rig. And just see what happens and then make my decision after that. Come back over here in the area that I hadn't fished since the first day. I had a lot of bites over here. Uh, been just kind of maybe saving it or not wanting to come back over here. See a lot of stuff on the surface in here since I've been back. Looks like bass feeding and stuff further back in here. I like it when they're way more aggressive. Even those fish up there that I could see, I had to throw at those a couple times to get them to eat, you know, and the, and the pitch was precise. So, you know, just now out here, it just, just goes to show you how finicky they are. Smell that power bait. Oh, he did. You get in there, get you a mouthful of that power bait. That ain't no two pounder. Two pounds, two ounces. All right. Good deal. Two pounds, 11 ounces. Nice. Two 11. I could just get a few more of those. All right, you're still in first place with 22 pounds, eight ounces. Justin Lucas is in second place. He has six fish for 20 pounds and zero ounces. Stuff moving around back in here. I don't know if any of it's bass or not, but I almost thought about picking up the swim bait, just getting something up in the water column, but Dude, they freaking love the drop shot right here. I need about another two something to catch uh, Clawson, don't I? One pound, six ounces, and you move into third. Definitely need to do something different next period because this one has been somewhat of a fail. Either go over in the canyons or go up the river. Don't. God. Oh, it came on. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Lines out into period two. Very hard period. Again, I lost another one. You know, I should be leading this tournament by a bunch. 
I gotta decide if I'm gonna keep running this further down the lake or if I'm gonna run back up the river and start swimming a jig like I've been doing. Maybe something will change this afternoon and I, maybe I can even go back to some of those other places and get bites or these fish here will fire again or something. Feels like I've just beat this area to death. I'm really starting to run out of ideas. Not good, but not bad. We're over here where a lot of bites were, so I think in the third, maybe a little bit of luck, we can catch up and pass somebody. We're gonna move again, go back over where I caught those four pounders this morning, and look in that area over there some more, and do a lot of praying. Now we're worried about it, we'll just keep fishing and see how it works out in third pair. It'd be one cool comeback, but uh, let's see if we can make it happen. While our pros take their second and final break of the championship round, let's catch up with James Watson for today's General Tire Coffee Talk. It's a General Tire Coffee Talk. I got Brent Chapman, I got Jeff Sprague, and we're fixing to get after it. Listen, one of the last times you and I were here together, you almost had you almost got into an all out altercation with everybody in the crowd because they played Lee Greenwood, uh, God bless the USA, and everybody stood up and put their hand over their heart like it was the national, national anthem. anthem. And Watson, I'm offended. serious, it happened right he out did, there, Chapman. In this parking lot, and Watson right there. offended the entire community of East Texas. Because I was just sitting down, I was like, are these? Are these people for real? <laughs> Since we're both military guys, I, we both understand the, the importance of our flag and understand yes, the importance yes. of our anthem. Yeah. And I'm just tapping Watson, just being like, just, just, do, just it. do it, dude. Just, just do it. Just do it. Can't you? Do it. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Render the hands fully. <laughs> Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour is brought to you by Favorite Fishing, the future of fishing. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. General Tire, anywhere is possible. Old Wisconsin, real, genuine, taste. And by Guggen Baits, open, sniff, catch. This is Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. It's the Toro Stage 1 Sam Rayburn presented by Power Pole. Ten Titans in East Texas pursuing $100,000 in Bass Pro Tour glory. Luke Clawson searching for some answers, as is Mark Davis, but they're within striking distance. Tommy Biffle slowly moving his way up the score tracker, and Justin Lucas oh so close. Can he chase down the leader, Ot Defoe, who caught no scorable bass in the second period, but he's still on top. We have seen it pretty much every day. Mark Davis caught a six pound plus bass late in the day yesterday to get himself into the top eight and here to the championship round. But who's going to catch a Texas tank today? I really think the way this thing's gotten tight. I mean, it is really, really tight. These big fish in Texas, I believe whoever wins this thing is going to end up having to hook and land one of these things. And we're on Rayburn. We're talking about at any moment when that rod cracks and someone lands a six, seven, eight pounder, then the whole complexity of this thing just changes. And if you're going to win an event, so oftentimes it's got to be on your strength. Tommy Biffle has won big time events with a flipping stick in his hand. And Clawson has them right where he wants them. You let him be relevant in third and final period, he knows how to close a tournament out. So will he catch the big ones? Will someone catch fire in the third period? Will it be Lucas? Will it be Ot Defoe? JT, who do you feel like has the potential to really catch fire in the final two and a half hours? I really think it's going to be like a four horse race, honestly. And one of the reasons is there's no doubt Lucas is on the quality. He lands just one or two of those bites. He's probably going to just be gone with that. This is not unlike some of the other days that Ott has fished. He has not had a good second period yet. So let's not rule Ott out. Clawson's just always around and he just kind of fishes really loose. He'll move around and then you've got the legend, Tommy Biffle. He feels like he knows exactly what he needs to do. And I would have to say right now, he's the one with the most momentum. So we definitely have four people right now that are on their way to victory. Which one is it going to be at the end of the third period? $100,000 on the line. Who will be our champion to start the 2021 Bass Pro Tour season? Two, one, lines in, beginning of period number three. Ready to roll. Our lead is about nothing. We got to get it done. 
It could be as little as one bite or I might need three or four bites this period. I don't know. I'm pretty relaxed though, honestly, for what's happened today. I got like four or five more clusters of trees going south a couple more miles. I'm gonna keep hitting these and go from there. Well, they ain't gotta worry about me, son. We're opposing no threat. Oh, water looks good in here though. I like it. Might not catch a bass, but it looks good. We're back over here. We caught some this morning. We're doing exactly the same thing we've been doing and hoping for better results. In my mind right now, I'm about to make a big comeback and win my first event. We've got to be efficient and execute, and I think we'll be fine. Right after this big bush, we're rolling. Go to where at least I know some lived. I caught them the first day there. I was going to go up the river, and I kind of stalled out because of the lack of wind. It's just, it's like a lake out here. I thought it was going to be a little breezier out here, but that is not the case. Maybe the swim bait will save the day. Who knows? Perfect swim bait weather, honestly. They can see it with the sun, but it's hidden with the wind. Now, if you get a big and hung up, you can jump in there and go get it, can't you? Absolutely. Three minute penalty. It'll take three minutes for a big one. He'd be worth 100000 I'm going to put me on a soft jerk bait, Fast Pro Shady Shad. Twitch that around while they're chasing that bait and stuff. Two pounds, zero ounces. <laughs> Woo! Tommy Biffle just caught his eighth fish. He now moves to third place. He's at 17 pounds, 14 ounces. Go ahead, Biffle. Grinding it out up there. After this point, I'm thinking we're going to run back in the creek we just came of and fish some different stuff because more wind, there are less people than out here. Four pounds, 11 ounces out of the lead. One good and be worth a lot of money, wouldn't it? There's a good one. Five pounds, three ounces. Five, three. <laughs> I like it. I was just second guessing myself coming out here. Look what we got, a five, three. See a fish. Luke Clawson just caught a five pound, three ounce. That puts him within three ounces of Ot de Poe. Luke caught a five pounder. Ot ain't caught nothing, has he? Ot de Poe hadn't caught a fish since 1021. Are you kidding me? A lot, but he's getting pretty tired about right now. I mentioned that earlier. I said Clawson's only a big one behind me. Sounds like he caught a big one. I don't know. Maybe coming out here was a good idea. I was really thinking it was a bad idea, but it's looking a lot better all of a sudden. There's a reason there's boats everywhere. <clears throat> he looks scoreable. Two pounds, five ounces. <laughs> Two pounds, five ounces. Coming back through some of them same areas, I was throwing a chatterbait and I picked up my swim jig again. The swim jig I can get a little tighter to cover and and that's what them bigger ones want. That chatterbait out in front I think is may have been the reason I was catching nine scoreables. But if I put this thing in their house, it might trigger some better bites. I had a four nine right here yesterday. This exact cast right here, four nine. Right? Right there. I see that one. That's a good one. This fish is on a bed. I can't see it, but I saw it swim out of there. I haven't been swimming a jig a whole lot in this cleaner water, but there's two bites I had on it real quick. So they're still reacting to it. Three pounds, one ounce. What do you want? Love you. Two pounds, 10 ounces. Mm. Few and far in between. 
You're 12 pounds, 13 ounces back from first. Still doable. I know that sounds crazy, but two or three banks. I knew it was going to struggle today coming in here unless I found something new. I've seen too many times guys fishing history too much and just dying in an area because that's where they got some bites. You know, this is the one thing I've always loved about this sport is it's different every day. You can do it for 50 years and still not make any more sense than it did when you started. Come on, big boy. Had to keep. Two pounds, five ounces. Tommy Biffle now is third with 20 pounds, three ounces, and you are fourth with 20 pounds, zero ounces. Dude, what has made them just stop? Oh, God, I missed him. They don't bite this. Both good when it's some shad around. They bite it good any time, but they really like it in a little breeze. Luke Clausen just caught a two pound, six ounce bass. He is now in first place with 24 pounds, 11 ounces. I wonder who's sweating more, Ida or Luke. What a slow second and third period it's been. Man, I just did not see this coming. I really feel like we need to catch like a four or five pounder to have a chance. Right now, it's getting bites as hard as you see by score tracker. I mean, it's not like they're catching very much. Things have done so good right out of the gate, first period, and then those left the door open, but we're gonna do all we can till he tells me lines out. Welcome back to Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. The Toro Stage 1 Sam Rayburn is presented by PowerPole. This Sam Rayburn toad of 5 pounds 3 ounces is now Luke Clawson's largest catch of Stage 1. Not only has it helped him to take the lead, but also in Luke's pursuit to be one of 32 anglers who will qualify for the general tire heavy hitters of 2022. With his recent Berkeley Big Bass of the Day, Mercury Pro Luke Clawson sent shockwaves across Score Tracker. Weights among our top pros are tight, however, and plenty of time remains in period three. Find quality fish, and a championship trophy may follow. I still don't know how long to keep going. It's just random bushes forever. It's really torn if I go Hail Mary up the river to some of the stuff I've fished or stay down here, I don't really know what's any better. I'm afraid I get up there and there's people everywhere, but. Still believe we're in a good spot to win this thing. Do for like a six pounder. You know how many times two buddies were fishing on Rayburn and they caught three for 13 in Iowa in 15 minutes? A million times. Oh, oh God. Got her, baby. My goodness. Bam. Four pounds, 10 ounces. Whew. Look at that beautiful fish. Man, thank goodness she was hooked good enough to withstand all that chaos. Gerald Spores in third. Dang. That's seven fish for 21 pounds, 11 ounces. It's just become like a five man race. There's five anglers that have 20 pounds or better. <laughs> Man, I went through this area with a chatterbait, just a bunch of non-scorables. I've been coming through here with a swim jig, and they're growing. I know that it's not like my deal's going away. I think these fish up here probably just move around. I mean, they've got a lot of options as to where they want, they can live. I'm trying to switch it up a little bit, trying to move around, try to flip in some wood for a minute. I'm gonna try throwing a swim bait out here for a minute too. A lot more confidence in some new fish getting up on these points. I don't know if that's the case or not, but it feels right right now. I'm bouncing back and forth between a bladed jig and a worm pretty much. Worm would be a sure bet to find them, but it's just slow. I can cover a lot more water with the bladed jig, and I wanna think that if there's enough of them there that I'll still find them anyway.
Two pounds, ten ounces. Thank you, sir. So I can get some bites along here. I like it. You said really have to slow down, like throw a weightless bait in there and leave it lay on the bottom. Sport Tracker update. Luke Clawson's caught another fish. He's still in first place now. He has nine fish for 27 pounds and five ounces. I do not understand this. This place here has really let me down. Grinding away here, that's what it is, a grind. Here, throwing a weightless stick bait. I got a Texas rig now, because it seems like the bites I'm getting, I just literally have to leave it lay there. It's uh, obviously I'm fishing by some fish in some of these places, because most of them don't even bite it on the fall. It's a lot of times on the bottom, I move it once they bite it. Slut. Light touch here. Four pounds, six ounces. Four, six. Yes. I love you. Cliff Crochet just caught a four pound, six ounce bass. That did push you down to seventh place. Let's run down there and hit that in the little spot where I caught that last keeper. How far from fifth am I? You are six pounds out of fifth. That is Justin Lucas now with 20 pounds, zero ounces. I had the right baits, just didn't have enough of them. Dude, I am trying other stuff, but it just, it just is not working. It's a good sign that you're not the right flavor. This is a really good stretch of trees in front of me, so if I could pick anywhere on the lake right now and spend the last 40 minutes, this is it. Keep pumping this jig through all this cover. I catch those white bass, dude. I'm telling you, the bass are here. Look right there. See? Be a bass. Be scoreable. Stay on my hook. Stay on my hook. Gosh, please be scoreable. Two pounds, one ounce. Yeah! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Luke, Art Defoe has caught his 11th bass, a two pound, one ounce fish. You still have a two pound, 12 ounce lead. I'd like to get a bite right now. It's just, uh, man, it's not easy, and I don't know what else to do. It's a lot of grinding around, casting, and hoping. That's a school. Yes. Two pounds, 13 ounces. Now we one bite away. Gerald Spore has caught a two pound, 13 ounce bass. He's still in third place. He now only needs two pounds, 13 ounces to take the lead. Kind of what keeps coming through my mind right now, leading the tournament, and I lost a six pounder this morning. I'm not gonna give it to him. I know that. They're not gonna give it to me, and I'm not gonna give it to them. We got work to do. This is Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. The Toro Stage 1 Sam Raber is presented by PowerPole. Under 30 minutes remain in the first championship round of the 2021 Bass Pro Tour season. Yes. And the pressure is mounting in this East Texas shootout. Please be scoreable. The gunslinger that wins this showdown will leave Sam Raber Reservoir with the Stage 1 trophy and $100,000. Shimano Pro Luke Clawson still leads, but his advantage over the field is slim. Lurking just behind are both Ot Depot and Gerald Sporer, who trail on score tracker by less than three pounds. This final round may very well come down to the last cast. Score still the same. You still hold a two pound, 12 ounce lead over Ot Defoe. You know, I've got a, two keepers this period and a few bites, but not like it was easy, and that was, uh, Long time in between them. Throwing a little small square bill crankbait and all the fish in the area get excited. Caught a scoreable already. I know there's more in there. There's gotta be more scoreables. Should have never put this swim jig down. Might have been him. Dang, dude, I can't catch one in here. We should probably leave. How far are we back? Seven pounds? Seven pounds, five ounces. 
Here, let's move real quick. We're gonna be right here, let's hold with. I'm gonna fish all the way around this thing. Need to get back up to third. I need a couple of four pounders real quick. That or a big one. I'm thinking actually about changing baits, maybe that blade of jig. Sometimes one bait catches better fish than another. This one's getting plenty of bites, but they're just not quite big enough. Just a little small balsa wood crankbait that I make. Hey y'all. Two pounds, 10 ounces. Mark Davis caught a two pound, 10 ounce bass. Now he's in sixth place, four pounds, 15 ounces behind you. God, oh my God. Well, I finally got another bite to the keep. The fish, when I found them in practice, were out outside out there and they moved on up here on top. Let's see if we can get another one. Out of all those fish and only one scoreable. Time to try something else. That's a scoreable. Two pounds, zero ounces. Two pounds, baby. We ain't got time to talk. Gerald Sport has caught a two pound, zero ounce fish. He's now in second place. We're around to that point right there. That fish that brings you to 13 ounces behind Luke Clawson. 13 ounces? Yes, sir. Okay, now you got me nervous. There's a big one. Not a big one, but a good one. Four pounds, zero ounces. Okay. That's what we've been looking for. Mark Davis just caught a four pound bass, giving him a total of 19 pounds, one ounce. Jeez. Come on, man. Hail Mary. Yeah, there's several of them around there. They're hard to catch. This one little sand spot here, I'm sure they're spawning on it. Stay on there. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, stay on there. Please stay on there, fish. Please stay on there. Yes! Yes! Two pounds, 12 ounces. Through 12, dude, I gotta catch another one. Because I think that that ties us. Luke, I'll give you a score tracker update. Odd Defoe is in first place. He's got the same weight that you do, but he's caught more fish than you. Really? Yep. Oh my God. Nail biter, boy. Nail biter. Let's just go ahead and catch two or three more. Let's get this one in the boat. Stay on there, fish. Stay on there. Yes! Yes! Thank you, Jesus. Yes! Two pounds, 13 ounces. Yes! We're not tied anymore. Five, four, three, two, one. Lines out. That's the end of the round. Oh, man. That sucks. I'm at a loss for words. Dude, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Texas has been so good to me, so incredibly good to me. Two tournaments down here last year, a uh, Bass Pro Tour and a Cup, and I won both of them. Awesome finish, I mean, for a lot. Dead gun. I needed 212. Picked up a Texas rig worm. This is a Bass Pro Magnum Finec worm, uh, purple brown color, 316 tungsten weight and a VMC 3 alt heavy duty worm hook. I call it 213 on that. Every morning you think about the one I lost, and I do today, that, that one, if I didn't win, it was gonna hurt me pretty dang bad. And it did. That is insane. Absolutely unbelievable.
Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour is brought to you by Toro, Count On It, Mercury, Go Boldly, Epic Baits, Be Epic Today, CarParts.com, Get the Right Parts Right Now at CarParts.com, and by Federal Ammunition. This is Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour. It's the Toro Stage 1, Sam Rayburn presented by Power Pole. So by the narrowest margin in Bass Pro Tour history, Ott Defoe holds off Luke Clawson by 2 pounds, 13 ounces on Sam Rayburn Reservoir. He catches a 212 and a 213 to overtake a hard-charging Luke Clawson. And in the closest margin in Bass Pro Tour history, Ott Defoe is a two-time winner, quantity versus quality. Quantity won, but not by much, JT. Yeah, not, not by much at all, Chad. You know, one of the really great things that we had going on this week was just some of those really cool races between, you know, Justin Lucas. He's just catching some really big bass on a drop shot. Unfortunately, lost a few, too, or he would have been more of a factor at the end. Um, and, then, and then you had Clawson. You know, he lost one big one. He caught a five-something right there at the end. But, it, you know, it was Ott Defoe. Just, he, he caught more, 13. And to stay with it, he went five hours and 10 minutes without a scorable bass. I mean, plummeting down, watching guys catch up to him after that great start. But he held true. He never panicked, as Ott never does. And he's able to win a second Bass Pro Tour title, Mark. We always wonder how this automatic bid in the championship round is going to work out. And I'm going to look back at this one and say it was probably one of the most important that an angler's ever earned. Defoe got to rest and sit on the bank for two days and let those fish up the river in those small current driven areas, replenish, reload and not get pounded on. If he has to go beat these fish up in the knockout round, I don't think he's able to win the event. And every day we saw him get off to a fast start and then in the third period do just enough, just enough to stay ahead of the score tracker. Today was no different except probably a lot more stressful. Our friends at Berkeley handing out big bass cash. Dustin Connell won $1,000 when Woo! he caught this one. None of us thought it would oh, hold up throughout the week, right but it did. And DC gets another $3,000 from Berkeley for that 9.5. Did that just happen? Before we get you out to Ot Defoe and the Stage 1 trophy presentation, let's look at the current standings for the general tire heavy hitters of 2022. Every angler's largest catch from each of the seven Bass Pro Tour stages will help them to be one of the 32 pros who will qualify for next year's event. The big thing for me was fishing up north. You know, I mean, that was that was something that my very first day of practice I spent up there and got a fair number of bites. That was where I committed to, and I only had that one day of practice up there, but I went back up there every single day after that. And honestly, I had one really key spot where I was starting each and every day that would make it pretty easy on me, and, uh, and that place was really good to me again today. And of getting 10 scorable bass off of that first stop. A check for $100,000, and now a two-time winner on the Bass Pro Tour. Ott Defoe is your 2021 Stage 1 champion. Be sure to join us next week as 40 knockout round pros once again compete for Major League yes. Fishing Glory on Lake Travis in Austin, Texas.